Japanese scientists have successfully created the world's first artificially grown pituitary glands using embryonic stem cells from a mouse. The pituitary gland located in the brain regulates and balances various hormones. A team of research led by Niken Research in Nagoya University says it used special chemicals to stimulate growth in a mouse's embryo's stem cells. The resulting tissue developed into a pituitary gland. The tissue was then transplanted into mice that had pituitary gland defects. The team observed changes in the amounts of hormones produced as well as increased activity levels in the mice. They say the lab-grown tissues functioned exactly like natural pituitary glands. Research director Yoshiki Sasai says that until now, there has been no fundamental treatment for diseases like growth hormone deficiencies, which prevent people from growing taller. The pituitary gland has been considered a tissue that cannot regenerate once damaged. Our work is significant in that it has resulted in creating new ways to cure endocrine-related problems. The findings will be published in the British science journal Nature on Thursday. A doctor says the physical development of children in Fukushima Prefecture may be affected by the lack of outdoor activity due to the nuclear plant accident. Shintaro Kikuchi tracked the weight of 245 children aged 4 to 6 in two kindergartens in Koryama City, about 60 kilometers from the plant. The results show an average weight gain of 0.81 kilograms over the year through June. The figure for children in the same age group in the the previous year was 3.1 kilograms. Children in one of the kindergartens used to get one and a half hours of outdoor activity per day, but have been allowed to play only indoors after the accident. The smaller weight gain could be related to reduced appetites due to lack of exercise, as well as changes in secretion of growth hormones due to stress. The children may not be getting enough protein to develop their muscles. Kikuchi said the decrease may be temporary, but that more checks are needed to prevent children's stunted growth. The International Energy Agency says that a global trend towards scrapping nuclear power in the wake of the Fukushima accident would cause a rise in energy costs. The IEA says in its annual report that under such a trend, demand for natural gas and coal would rise dramatically, causing higher prices while the use of renewable energy sources such as wind power would increase. It says that as a result, energy importing countries will face a combined increase in energy costs of $90 billion in 2035. Since I met with the NRC, there's been three nuclear meltdowns. Now you'd think that the Fukushima accidents would cause the NRC to stand back and say, what have we been doing wrong? What should we do to make these plants safer? That's not happening. What's the rush at the NRC? They are pushing rapidly to give a design certification to the Vogel units and the VC summer units. And to my mind, there's, there's no pressing need. America doesn't need the power. Georgia and South Carolina have more than enough. And when the plants are going to be built, the cost of power from them is going to be higher than anything they could buy from any other source. It doesn't make sense, except for the political pressure that's being applied. Sasebo City in southwestern Japan held a drill to prepare for the possible leakage of radioactivity from a nuclear submarine docked at a U.S. naval base in the city. The drill on Thursday was based on a scenario that radioactive materials were leaking from a U.S. nuclear submarine and that higher than usual radiation was being detected in the surrounding areas. About 500 people, including local residents, took part in the drill. Police officers and emergency services workers bust residents from around the U.S. base to an emergency shelter and checked their clothing for contamination. The city moved an emergency shelter to a community center 700 meters further away. 
but the city conducted the exercise using a manual drawn up by the central government before the Fukushima accident. I'm worried about nuclear submarines leaking radioactivity in our city. I've been concerned about radiation since the accident at Fukushima. EPCO is very silent. I, I think the Japan Times is a very credible uh -huh. uh, newspaper record. It just, you know, issued uh, sort of an editorial very much concerned about the uh -huh. lack of transparency from uh -huh. EPCO that we like. We need to know more about what's happening to the nuclear, the emergency workers there. That um, there is talk, and if the Japan Times is reporting it, this is not just rumors on Twitter or anything like this. This is actual, you know, uh, uh, leaks coming out. Uh, this this concern that at Fukushima Medical College, there may be dozens, possibly hundreds, maybe even thousands of bodies of uh, new dead nuclear workers. That people who. Uh, are basically, you know, uh, laborers who are sent there. Where, where have you and, heard uh, this? Are for now. Pardon? Where have you heard that? I beg your pardon? Where have you heard well, that? Why the Japan? Well, this, I mean, I have colleagues there, and they, they're in the editorial department. And so there have been Twitter posts about this, but the, um, the apparently, as there, there's been cold storage at a medical college, you know, which, which has, uh, uh, you know, these whole refrigerated rooms for the cadavers. That they, you know, they do research on and all that. Well, I, so apparently <laughs> the ice chest is full and uh, bodies, mm -hmm. and people are, you know, this is why the Japan Times put out a very much, you know, very very great tone uh, editorial, you know, last couple of days. You know? So, so all you right. know, the, these are pretty credible reports coming out, probably from the hospital staff, that they're beyond capacity; they don't know what to do.